This Learn Electrics video is part two of our series on basic electronics. For anyone in the electrical industry, it is a good idea to have at least a basic grasp of electronics. And for those wishing to pursue a career in electronics, this is a great starting point. This video covers some absolutely essential calculations and you must understand the concepts shown. Kirchhoff's laws are important rules that must be grasped. Everything else hinges on understanding these principles. They are just as important as Ohm's law. Also, being able to perform calculations on both series circuits and parallel circuits is a must, as is being able to work with circuits that combine series and parallel components together. And in this video, we will go in depth with our calculations. Pause the video when you need to and make the time to do the calculations. It really is a very beneficial investment of your time. You'll remember from part one that we had some basic electrical units as shown here. We also looked at Ohm's law in part one and how voltage, current and resistance are interrelated. If we have a circuit of 10 volts and a resistance of 5 ohms, how many amps of current are flowing in this circuit? Remember that voltage over resistance gives us the current. 10 volts divided by 5 ohms will give 2 amps of current. With a series circuit, the resistances are in line with each other. One resistor follows another. In this example, we have two 5 ohm resistors that feed only into each other. There are no other pathways for either resistor, so we simply add the values together to give us 5 plus 5, or 10 ohms. To calculate the current flowing, we divide 10 volts by 10 ohms, and we have 1 amp of current. 1 amp flows out of the battery, 1 amp flows into the battery, therefore 1 amp must flow through each resistor. We can also calculate the voltage drop, that is, how much voltage is across each component. The voltage is calculated from the current and resistance. We can see from this calculation that 5 volts is dropped across each resistor. Two resistors, 2 times 5 is 10 volts, and this is the same as the battery or voltage source. The same method works with three resistors in series. Find the total resistance by adding the resistances together, and then calculate the current. As it is a series circuit, the same current passes through each resistor. Now we can calculate the voltage drop across each resistor as shown, and all the voltage drops will add up to the source voltage. An important set of laws were put together by Gustav Kirchhoff. Gustav Kirchhoff was a 19th century Prussian scientist who contributed massively to our understanding of electrical circuits and spectroscopy back in the 1800s. Kirchhoff also coined the now common phrase black body radiation. Of interest to us in the electrical world are two very important laws. These are Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law. They are so very fundamental and underpin so much of what we do. Kirchhoff's current law tells us that if 5 amps flows into a circuit, then the same 5 amps must flow out of it. If we look at a single electrical point, a node, where several components meet, we can add up all the currents that are flowing into that point. We usually visualise conventional current flow, that is, flowing from positive to negative. In this example, we have three current inputs, a 6 amp, a 3 amp and a 1 amp, making 10 amps in total. Flowing out, we have two pathways, an 8 amp and a 2 amp. This is 10 amps output in total, and this satisfies Kirchhoff's current law. 10 amps flows in, and 10 amps flows out. Kirchhoff's voltage law follows a similar pattern. It states that all the individual voltages in a circuit will add up to the source or supply voltage. Let's look at this. A closed circuit will be made up of a source voltage, Vs, and several components, each with their own voltage drop, shown here as V1, V2, etc. 
Each resistor of the circuit can have its own individual voltage drop calculated. If we know the current in the circuit, and we know the individual resistance, we can calculate the individual voltage drop. We could do this for each part of the circuit, and Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the source voltage is equal to the sum of all the individual voltages. In our example, the source voltage is 24 volts. If we add up V1, V2, etc., we also have 24 volts. 24 volts minus 24 volts equals zero, as we expected. Parallel circuits are very common in electronics. By pairing different components in parallel, we can make things happen. The voltage across a parallel circuit does not change. In the example shown, the voltage across the two resistors is always 12 volts. But we will have individual currents through each resistor, and this will affect the total current in the circuit. Here we have a 6 ohm resistor and a 12 ohm resistor in parallel. They are across a 12 volt supply, and we can now calculate the total circuit current. The current in R1 will be 12 volts divided by 6 ohms, which gives us 2 amps. The resistance of R2 is bigger, so the current should be lower. Calculating 12 volts divided by 12 ohms, we have a current of 1 amp. The total current in the circuit is therefore 2 amps plus 1 amp, which is 3 amps. Another way to imagine this is to ask the question, what single resistor could replace both R1 and R2? The new resistor, which we will call RP for parallel resistance, must allow 3 amps to flow the same as R1 and R2 combined. Simple Ohm's law tells us that 12 volts divided by 3 amps is 4 ohms of resistance. This single resistor, RP, should be 4 ohms. As you would expect, there are several methods for calculating parallel resistances, and we should look at these now. They are important, and anybody contemplating a career or hobby in electronics simply must know these easy to use calculations, as should any electrician sitting electrical exams. Let's recap so far. What single resistor, RP, can replace the two resistors in this circuit? The method we have just used is from Ohm's law. The voltage divided by the resistance will give the current in each resistor. Then we can add the currents together and use Ohm's law again to calculate the new resistance. Shown here, we can replace the 60 ohm and 120 ohm resistors with just one resistor of 40 ohms. Notice that the parallel resistance is always smaller than the smallest of the original resistors. This is always the case. If your calculation ever shows this as being bigger, then you've done something wrong. The parallel resistance will always be smaller. We've just calculated the overall parallel resistance by first calculating the total current flowing in the circuit. To do this, we also needed to know the circuit voltage. There is another method, which I call the MAD method. MAD, M-A-D, for multiply, add and divide. This method will work for any two resistors in parallel. And you only need to know the individual resistances to be able to calculate the parallel resistance. How do we do this? Looking at the same circuit of 60 ohms and 120 ohms, we first multiply R1 and R2 on the top row. Then we add R1 and R2 on the bottom row. And to find our new value, we simply divide the top row by the bottom row. And you can see the calculations shown here. Our answer is 40 ohms, as in the previous example. And this will work for any two resistors in parallel. But what about three resistors? We can still use the MAD method. Calculate R1 and R2 first, and then calculate for R3. In this example, calculating the new values for R1 and R2 first, we have 40 ohms and 120 ohms in parallel, and this gives 30 ohms for RP. Now we can use the new resistance RP, so we have 30 ohms in parallel 
with the 270 ohm resistor. We can now do another MAD calculation as we now have just two resistances again. Here is the calculation. Multiply the top row, add the bottom and divide the bottom row into the top. Our answer, the total parallel resistance, is now 27 ohms. And notice that 27 is smaller than any of the original values. And of course, there is yet another method for calculating two or more resistors in parallel. If we had six, seven or more parallel resistors, the MAD method would need six, seven or more calculations. There has to be an easier way. And this is called the reciprocal method. This looks complicated, but it isn't. And it works for any number of resistors. You just need to be methodical when working things out. This method takes each resistor value, R1, R2, R3, etc, and divides it into the number 1. Then we add all those new numbers together. And finally, divide that new number into 1 to give us RT, the total parallel resistance. Again, this number will always be smaller than any of the original resistor values. We will use the same three resistor values as in the two previous examples, and we should get the same answer. We can show the calculation like this. Put in the resistor values, and now we are ready to start calculating. My recommendation is to write down each value as you calculate it. And be methodical and neat. That way you will only need to do the calculation once. 1 divided by 40 is 0 0.025. Write it down. 1 divided by 120 is 0 0.008333 forevermore. So we need to chop off the end bit. The same with the 270 ohm resistor. Chop off the end digits after calculation. Now add all three of them together and we have 0 0.037. Note that this is not the answer. Not yet. This is only halfway. We now need to divide this 0 0.037 into 1 to get RT. 1 divided by 0 0.037 is 27.027027 etc. This slight difference is because we've chopped off some of the long numbers after the decimal point. But this is close enough to call it 27 ohms and those tiny differences don't matter. But do always be observant with zeros after the decimal point. Make sure that you have the right number of zeros written down. The same as shown on your calculator. A mistake at this stage will give you a wrong answer and you may not realise the error. Let's look at circuits with series and parallel resistances together. Here are some tips to help and we will work through an example on the next slide. Look at the circuit and decide where you can split the circuit into different blocks. Which blocks are in parallel and which blocks are in series. Now we can treat each block individually. Take the step-by-step -step approach. A few small steps will get you there. And always write down what you know as you calculate each part. Redraw the circuit as you work through it, simplifying at each stage. We are asked to calculate the total circuit resistance. In other words, what a single resistor can replace all these resistors. And when we know that, we are required to calculate the total circuit current. Let's do this in stages. First, decide where we can split the circuit into blocks. And remember Kirchhoff's current law. Which parts are a common point? We can split this drawing into three blocks. All the current that flows into block 1 must flow out of block 1. That's easy, as there is only one resistor. But block 2 has three resistors. And look, all three are joined at the top and all three are joined at the bottom, so that must be a block in its own right. And the same with block 3. That makes things a lot easier. Block 1 needs nothing doing. Block 2 is three parallel resistors, so use the reciprocal method to calculate this. And block 3 is just two resistors, and the MAD method 
is the most appropriate. Calculate these and redraw the circuit. Your redrawn circuit should look like this. A 20 volt source with what is now just three resistors in series. From this point on, life is easy. Add these three values together and we can redraw the circuit again. A 20 volt circuit with a 200 ohm resistor. Now use Ohm's law to calculate the total circuit current. Current equals voltage divided by resistance and 20 divided by 200 is 0 0.1 amps. So in the end, this complicated looking circuit was broken down into easily managed chunks. We found that the total circuit resistance was 200 ohms and that the total current flowing was just 0 0.1 amps. We could also have worked out the voltage drop across each block and we could have calculated the wattage of each resistor from what we learnt in part one. Perhaps have a go just for fun. Above all, work methodically, make many small steps and write your calculations down. And practice, practice, practice. Once learnt, these methods will stay with you for life. Just a little summary on this part. Series resistances can be added together. Parallel resistances must be calculated using one of two formulas. For two resistors we use the MAD method, in other words we multiply, add and divide. For two or more resistors use the reciprocal method. Kirchhoff's law tells us that the sum of all the currents flowing into a circuit are matched by the sum of all the currents flowing out of the circuit and the sum of all the individual voltage drops across each of the parts of the circuit are equal to the source voltage. And that is it for part two. We hope that you enjoyed this video on basic electronics and that you've put some more knowledge into your mental toolbox. There are many more videos on electronics to follow on a whole range of components and related topics. If you haven't done so already, please click on subscribe below to have access to all of our videos and please press the notify button to be sure of not missing our next video. Subscribing also helps us too and we really do appreciate this. Typing in Learn Electrics or one word into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all of our videos at any time. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.